the orange stuff? I don't know yet. But it's only on this part of the mummy's shirt. I don't know if it's synthetic or natural, but it's definitely a fiber. Hello, kind friends and companions. Welcome back to Making with Morgan. This week, we are taking a look at fiber identification. If you, like Abby from NCIS, sometimes have trouble telling your synthetic from natural fibers, stick around. This episode was brought to you by Acorn TV. Head there now to watch the best that British television has to offer. Try Acorn TV free for 30 days by going to acorn.tv and use code MORGAN. Now today, we are going to be exploring three different identification methods. The first is a classic, and let's be honest, the reason that you clicked on this video, so let's hop to it. Start off with a pre-sliced selection of suspicious samples, say that three times fast. Set your candle to a medium flame, and then tiny tweeze your first slice of fabric. Once it catches, remove it from the flame and observe. Cotton, linen, and cellulose adjacent fibers like rayon will smell and look like burning paper as you cook them and produce a fine, almost imperceptible to the touch ash. Protein fibers like wool and silk will smell like burning hair and often self-extinguish, making them great clothing to wear around a camp or hearth fire. If you don't know what burning hair smells like, well, then what were you even doing with your childhood? Just kidding. Don't do that. It will produce a gritty, grainy ash bead that you can easily crush with your fingers. Lastly, synthetics such as nylon, polyester, and acrylic will melt rather than burn and produce a hard melted bead of plastic that will not easily crush once cooled. The smell can vary since there are many different kinds of synthetic fiber, but in general, it may have a melty plastic or chemical odor. If you are interested in narrowing down your synthetic fiber possibilities, there are many charts available online that can be found by searching for fiber burn chart. Just knowing that it is a melting fabric is enough information for me. The second method is simply touch and appearance. Not as foolproof as burning, but much less likely to get the fabric store employees angry with you. Woven cotton fabric is often fine but stiff and will crease if pinched. Up close, we can see that the fibers are very even and tightly woven. Knit cotton fabric will look quite different, but we are mostly going to stick to plain weave for this video. Linen will happily wrinkle if you look at it sideways, so a quick scrunch test is enough to tell us that this is a member of the Frequent Ironer Miles Club. The fibers tend to be very uneven, varying drastically in width. If you look at this chonky boy here, you can see an example zoomed in. You can also see distinct holes between the fibers. This open weave style is very common with linen, although of course not universal, as shown by this twill weave linen. Wool is often coarse and textured to the touch, although it can certainly be quite soft. It has a bit of stretch and body and a graceful drape. Up close, it is very fuzzy with many little fiber ends sticking out in all directions and my goodness, this is really hard on the eyes. One second, let me switch over to a different color and there we go, much easier to see. As I was saying, wool is fuzzy due to its short curly fibers, although that mostly applies to woolen wool. Its long stapled sister, worsted wool, is trickier to tell by look and feel since it is much smoother. I don't have any examples of worsted wool to show you because I think it's the worst. Moving on to our other protein fiber friend, silk tends to be smooth and lustrous, shining as you move it in the light. Even a stubbly silk like Dubioni has a reflective quality that its natural fiber brethren often just simply lack. Silk fibers are generally long and smooth and tightly woven like so. For synthetic fabrics, it is difficult to tell any difference by sight alone, especially when a fabric is specifically developed to imitate a natural one. They do often feel different though. They are less easy to crush and not as prone to creasing. They're often very smooth and even a bit slippery. They have an ineffable quality that I have come to think of as plasticky or artificial. Spending some time at a fabric store that has fiber content labels you can trust will help you develop this sense of touch. Our third and final method is bleach. Any product that whitens or reduces the color of pigments is a bleach, so at the risk of sounding pedantic, specifically I'm going to be using sodium hypochlorite. Bleach isn't great for your skin, so on go the gloves. Using a bleach safe vessel, fill your container with only enough bleach to coat the bottom, that should be plenty. Add your testing sample, or in my case, many, many testing samples, and gently swish them around to help the bleach soak in. 
let rest for one hour, preferably outside because bleach also isn't great for your lungs. Let's see how our fabric fared. Cotton is mostly unchanged, although the flask print has lost some color. Linen is structurally unchanged, although the blue and red have both faded quite a bit. Wool has a lot of foam from reacting to the bleach, and the pieces feel far thinner, uh, much less body than they started with. The silk has almost entirely dissolved, with exception to the gold little metal threads that remain from the red sample. The synthetic samples are completely unchanged. Just for fun, let's give this a couple more hours to see if we have any more changes. And we're back. We have a bit more pigment loss from the cotton and linen, and the wool has nearly entirely dissolved, matching its protein fiber sister silk on the bottom right. Synthetic remains unchanged. The bleach method is great for determining if you have a 100% silk or wool fabric, or if it is actually a blend that includes a non-protein fiber, something that is not at all uncommon and will not necessarily be detected by the other two methods. It will not give you much information about synthetics or plant-based fibers, other than how resistant its dye is to bleach, I suppose. Well, there you have it, folks. Three different ways to identify your fiber content, which, in my opinion, are best used together. Have fun testing your fabric and watch out for the orange stuff. This episode and several others have been sponsored by Acorn TV because they are amazing. And where else are you going to get your Sunday morning laying in bed Miss Fisher fix for just $5.99 a month? If you enjoyed today's episode and it's definitely purely coincidental resemblance to a certain cooking channel here on YouTube, you would love Delicious, a great culinary soap opera. It's dramatic, thoughtful, funny, and yes, a bit campy, but all the more delightful for it. Also because Ian Glenn, hi. Try Acorn TV free for 30 days by going to acorn.tv and use code MORGAN. Escape to Britain and beyond without ever leaving your seat.